Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do now that the fan shroud is mounted onto the main box is get the fan wired up, or mounted up, sorry. And we're gonna do that so that we can make sure all of the wiring that runs down to the relays is the correct length. So I'm going to temporarily mount this. Now this fan is a three speed, it's a Galaxy brand, um, but it's a three speed. So we've got the neutral and then there is uh, one wire for each of the three speeds. And earlier, before I started building all this, I took the switch out. And from what I can tell, this is a very common switch layout that's used in pretty much any traditional box fan, no matter what brand it is. And there are some stamps on the back, and I'll insert a close-up shot of this because I'm sure you can't see that well in the, in the photo or in the video. But anyway, this side is the neutral rail, so that is uh, black in color, and then the others are labeled one, two, and three. And I tested these out with a multimeter when I first took it apart, and we'll see when we get it hooked up, but if I remember correctly, three was low and one was high, which doesn't make any sense, but whatever, we'll figure it out. So I'm going to cut this, or get the fan mounted first, and then we'll get the cables cut up and go from there. And this was mounted um, originally in this orientation with the ballast below the wires going up to where the switch was. Since I'm putting the relays and all the controls on the bottom and the switch is closed off, I'm just going to flip this over and it won't hurt the fan at all be in this orientation. So we will ultimately have this wire bundle zip tied into one of the vertical mounts here to keep everything tidy. So next thing I'm going to do is plug this in the box so I can get an idea, of course this is not plugged in to the wall, so I can get an idea how long this cord needs to be. So the first thing I want to do, since it's not going through the relay, since the neutral is not going through the relay, is make sure that I have a straight run there so that I can uh, wire nut this together and um, make connection for the neutral. So I'm going to plan to have this down here, give myself an extra little bit of slack. So I think about right there will do, and I'm going to snip this off. Now if I, this is a, um, I don't know what the term for it is, it, a polarized plug, so it will only go in one direction. So I'm going to follow out here to the switch and find that the side of the cord with the ribs on it is the neutral wire. Strip this back. Strip this one. This wire, surprisingly, is solid core, where the lamp cord is twisted. Wasn't expecting that. That's okay. And by the way, I do have the middle of the three speed wires just kind of rolled back on itself, clipped off, and then taped, because I don't need that one. I've already tested this out, that um, it works to run the low and high speed, which is the only ones that I'm interested in, without it's not an incremental or that kind of a system. So it's one wire per speed. Okay. 
next we have to run the two remaining speed wires, the, the high and low speed, extend them out so that they will reach down to the Arduino controlled relays. So once again, I'm going to use a little bit more of this leftover lamp cord to extend those wires down. Okay, there's that. So the last thing we'll do is bundle all this up. And secure it to that post with a zip tie. Okay, so I do have an outline down here already. Um, I've assembled the controller unit. This will be the display that is snapped into the fan grill. And then I've got the, the Arduino Uno, a Arduino Proto Shield, and then a generic relay, two channel relay unit that I picked up. I've 3D printed a base. Now this is one that um, I found on Thingiverse. It's not one that I, that I set up myself, so I'll share the link with that. And I also created a small um, standoff, I guess you could call it, to space the relay module up off the proto shield and keep, keep it protected from um, arcing anywhere in there. So with this base, I'm going to attach this to the floor of the box and I've already traced out the outline of roughly where I want that to go. So I'll just feed these wires in through here. So this is the remaining, uh, the, the hot wire that comes out of the outlet. So this one I'm going to clip here in a moment and I will splice in two leads coming out of it. So those will go to both the relays because they don't share a common bus. And I don't think there's room in there to, to jumper them over. I think we'll go ahead and power it up and give it a test run. This stuff out of the way so I don't suck anything into the fan blades. So I'll plug this in. And the Arduino is not powered yet. I'll just hit the switch. Okay, so no sparks yet. That's a good start. Now I'm gonna I've got a power supply that I'm gonna use temporarily. Plug this in. I've also got this uh, loose right now because this will eventually fit into the grill on the front of the fan and I don't want to pass the wires through there yet because I don't want to get caught, get it caught in the blades. So I'm just going to hold it for now. Plug this in. Okay, so the Arduino is powered up. It's in off mode. So I'm going to try and flip it to low speed. Here we go. It works! <laughs> First try! Although, with that noise, it sounds like it's high, so I think I probably have the wires mixed. I'm going to try high speed now. Yeah, that's clearly low. So I'm going to shut this off. I'm going to unplug it and then I'll switch the two speed wires. That was a good first test run though. Okay, that's switch, let's try again. Plug the cord in. Make sure everything's clear. Turn the power on. Arduino boots up. So, here's my little remote. 
So the way I've got this laid out is the down button is low speed, the up is high speed, the left arrow turns it off, and then the you can press the pound sign, and when you do that, that enters it into, into timer mode. So once you're in timer mode, you can type in any number of minutes that you want, clear up to 9,999 if you choose to go that high, and then you press the pound si sign again, it'll start the timer. Um, as you're typing the numbers in for the number of minutes you want it to run, you can press the star key and it will zero the, v the value out so you can type something else in. So if you accidentally type something wrong, um, it will clear it. Also, if you type a number in and you hit a fifth digit, um, it will zero it out because you've obviously made a mistake. Start back over with all zeros and you can start over again. And as, as the timer's running, you can toggle um, low and high speed back and forth without affecting the timer. And um, so let's fire back up again and see what happens. So I'm gonna push the down arrow, so that should be low speed. So that's a pretty quiet hum, that's clearly low speed. Now I'll press the uh, up, which would be high speed. And there it goes. <laughs> That sounds perfect. Now turn it off. So you might have noticed when I clicked from low speed to high speed, there was a, a short uh, break, a uh, pause in between the low speed relay unlatching or opening and then the high speed relay closing. Um, I didn't think that it was wise to have that an immediate trip over. Um, so there's, I believe, a half second, maybe three quarters of a second delay in between. So if I press low, and I press high, you can hear the relay click out and then the next one click on. Okay, that's a good first test. Okay, so I just finished buttoning up the um, grill install and tying up all the wires. I put some hot glue in there to uh, keep any of the wires from straying and getting pulled loose and coming into the fan blades. So that's all tied up. The power supply for the Arduino is tied up in there. I've got the backside filter put in. And if I come around front, you can see how I've got the display and their infrared receiver built into some of the open grate of the fan. So I'll just turn it on real quick. And that's it. So I'm just going to put some screw eyes in the top, stick it into the frame to the thick part of the wood there run those in and then hang it up in the ceiling, plug it in, and uh, it'll be ready to go. Okay, so here we are with the final product mounted up on the ceiling of my garage. I've got it plugged in, it's hanging from the eye bolts that I put up earlier, so I'm ready to test it. So here is, again, the remote that I'm using. This was a kind of a cheap purchase off of Amazon, and I'll put the link to this in, along with the other parts in the description. So let's give it a run. Um, again, the bottom button, the bottom arrow, is low. So there we go. Off. And you can see the uh, screen will show off. And then go to sleep. Turn it on to high. Back to low. And now that it's on, I can press the pound button get a little closer and you'll see that it's ready to be to have a number of minutes entered so if I put in say 180 minutes and then I press the start the pound key again you can see the uh, display starts to blink so this will now cut count down all the way from three hours and shut off on its own 
I can change the speed up and down from low to high without impacting the timer. It'll show the new speed and then the clock will update and return to it. So that's it. This has been a really fun project and I've got it working. I've already used it a couple times and it's picking up some of the dust, some of the dust that's floating around here in the shop. So I'm excited to have it in place as I work on some more projects. Thanks for watching.